As, uh, you will, as uh, uh, Andy said, we are well set up to acquire commercially published um, material under non-print legal deposit by agreement with the big publishers who will stream it to us. Uh, we can negotiate with the smaller publishers and people who want their content preserved, but that leaves a large tranche of um, uh, organisations, think tanks, uh, charities, working in the voluntary sector, uh, who publish non-commercially, free on the, wind, on the internet, but who lack the resources, uh, probably, to uh, push things to us because they are too busy serving their constituencies. Pushing material to the British Library is not uh, top of their list of important things to do. This applies also to large government departments, such as the Department of Health, Ministry of Justice, Home Office. They simply do not have the resources to push material to us through the publisher's submission portal. And by the way, most of them don't use ISBNs. And at the moment, the publisher's submission portal cannot process material unless it's got an ISBN. It will swallow it, but it then sits in a large bucket and doesn't go anywhere, <laughs> like into the catalogue, unless it's um, got an ISBN, because the ISBN is the link between the document and the catalogue record. So, we have the challenge of what to do with the publications of non-commercial organisations who don't use ISBNs and who lack the time or the will or, the, or who don't regard it as important to push material to the British Library, including um, uh, a great many government departments and agencies. Uh, we will probably capture this material through the Legal Deposit Web Archive, uh, through the domain crawl, but the difficulty then is finding it at the individual document level and providing easy access to that specific document. And as Helen was also saying, we also need a process which is scalable, which can process material in bulk with minimum human intervention, because human intervention is costly and the library does not have human resources to spare anymore. So, uh, we also need to, I, I mean Helen was saying we have several ter terabytes of um, service storage, and um, service storage isn't actually free, is it? It's, um, you know, to store things on a, a large server, it does have a cost. Oh, yeah. uh, over time, we wish to avoid the cost of storing things more than once, basically. So, the solution, we hope, is the digital documents harvesting and preservation tool, which is currently under development by the Austrian Institute of Technology in um, co collaboration with the British Library. And basically what the DD hatch, as we call it, will do is to um, uh, crawl important websites which curators have identified as containing or holding important documents. That would include uh, gov.uk, the Office for National Statistics website, uh, and uh, think tanks such as Demos, Smith Institute, uh, Social Market Foundation, Institute for Fiscal Studies, all of which publish important research. Uh, it would crawl the target websites at set intervals, store the material which it has retrieved, and present lists of new documents found to a librarian for selection. Uh, the selector would then um, create, in collaboration with the system, basic metadata. I say in collaboration with the system because the system will pre-populate the uh, on-screen cataloging form to a large extent so that what information we have to type in would be minimised. And uh, uh, the basic 
the basic record and the hot link would then stream into the catalogue and be available within seven days. And the beauty of this system is it works fine with things which have not got ISBNs. <laughs> so it cracks that problem. And we hope that by automating the cataloging process as much as possible, it will be scalable. And it will enable the library to pull in a lot more and find a lot more content at the level of the individual document and will complement Helen's work on developing the tools for people to analyse the very large data sets. Because unfortunately we still get readers coming in saying they want that consultation that they think was published last year on, um, on, traveler, on sites for travellers and they think it was DCLG but they're not sure and they don't know what it was called. And uh, it's for that kind of um, inquiry where we're looking for a specific and individual document that we, we are creating this tool which we hope will save the researchers time and be economical for us to use. And now I had um, hoped that uh, we would be able to uh, uh, show some screenshots of the, uh, uh, of the DD hat. But unfortunately, we only just got it, first version of it, for testing last week. And it's a bit buggy at the moment, so it's not fit for human, um, <laughs> not fit for human company just yet. But, um, uh, but I also want to just talk about what it will do when it's got over its teething troubles. Um, now, it's a web-based application which is based on the software which we use for the web crawls called um, the Annotation and Curation Tool, uh, version 3. Uh, Helen's team, that is the web archiving team, will set up users of uh, DD Hat uh, with um, permissions to use the system and will assign different roles to them and the different roles will have different levels of permission so that people can do different things. Uh, the uh, selector would then log into the system and would be brought to a personalised home page. And on their personalised home page, they will see a list of crawl, a list of um, websites or targets as we call them, which have been crawled and the date on which the crawl took place. Whether the crawl found anything, it will tell us if it didn't find anything and then we go scurrying off to see if the website's gone, moved, uh, changed its URL or what, the, what it's doing. Uh, and uh, it will provide a list of links to new documents which it has found since the last time it did the crawl. So that it doesn't present us with all 2,600 of the D Department of Health publications every time. <laughs> Just the, the ones that it, since the last time it came visit. And uh, lastly, on the uh, uh, homepage will be a link to uh, the system for setting up a new target URL, which we call the watch target for um, regular crawling. So, uh, that should enable the, the, the selector to work on a set of URLs in their own subject area without seeing everything that everybody else is doing. Uh, the system, by the way, uh, if somebody si tries to set up a new watch target which is already watched, it will tell you and it will block it so that we can avoid duplication of that kind. So, uh, the selector, uh, if they decide they want to, want to set up a demos as a watch target, you would um, enter, you would um, specify, that you'd make sure that nobody else had set it up already. You then spec and specify uh, the, um, the crawl frequency in the light of the volume of publishing. You may wish to visit it once a month 
once a month, once a quarter, or annually, depending on how much they produce. You can, in theory, set a cap, though that wouldn't be applicable in these cases. And the system will check for you whether the website which you wish to crawl meets the non-print legal deposit selection criteria which Helen explained earlier. And um, the system can be used to um, can be used to will primarily be used to um, gather material under non-print legal deposit. But there is a facility to start off a license application. If you wish to make a particular website or a particular document available outside of the British Library, if you wish to use it with one of our remote services, there is a facility within the tool for starting off an app, a contact with the website owner to um, get them to sign our standard license so that we can make dual use of the document. But unfortunately, we have to keep two copies in that case at the moment. <laughs> uh, though hopefully when we will eventually be able to have one object with different sets of rights attached. At the moment, we are supposed to keep two separate copies of, of the document. Uh, and um, rights that are, uh, that are available for a particular website or document are recorded by the tool so that we know what we can do with a particular set and that is visible to anybody who's using the tool. Right, so you can, um, off goes your, uh, your crawler uh, at the specified intervals uh, across the website, retrieves documents, and it will then send either the selector or a generic email address a message saying, um, crawl completed, documents awaiting your attention. And uh, it will report, as I've said, if no documents were found, were found. It will also alert you to possible duplicates. If it's not sure, if a document is new or if it's a duplicate, it will show you both documents side by side and then the curator decides whether it's a duplicate or not, whether it's a duplicate and can be ignored or whether it's a new edition that you have to uh, catalogue. Uh, you can also choose to uh, use the ignore button and ignore documents which are not uh, of sufficient value for um, individual cataloguing and that would include uh, a great deal of the sort of assorted um, gubbins that government departments churn out in the way of promotional leaflets, forms, directions, internal memos, two pages long uh, and, um, um, and some minutes of um, internal committee meetings etc etc. That would be retrieved, but could be then ignored. And uh, it will then, hopefully, uh, pre-populate a metadata creation form. You have to assign your document to a category. It can either be a monograph, a book, or a journal issue, like a newsletter issue, or a journal article, if your journals um, split into individual articles. And each of those um, categories would have their own appropriate metadata form. And journal issues and journal articles would be linked to a master record for the journal title. Uh, so that you would have, be able to retrieve both the journal and its issues and the individual issue or an article, more likely. Uh, right, the next step is for the selector to uh, review and um, uh, edit the metadata. 
uh, for each document. And as I was saying, there are separate screens for books, journal issues and journal articles. And the uh, screens will have been at least currently pre-populated using a piece of software called the MEX, the Metadata Extraction Tool. And the MEX is an internal British Library application that was developed um, for uh, the uh, digital processing teams in Boston Spa. And basically it will extract metadata from the, uh, uh, the document or the landing page surrounding the document on which it sits and it will use that metadata to pre-populate the form. Uh, however, selectors will need to check and edit the metadata before they hit the submit button, particularly probably to unscramble personal names and make sure that the, the surname and the given names are in different boxes. Uh, I also learned to my um, somewhat horror that we will be assigning fast subject headings at a fairly high level, I am promised. Uh, I, don't, I mean, knowing how long it takes to classify a document, but doubtless adding the subject headings will make it more uh, usable. Uh, then uh, the, the editing will be made easier because the document and the form will be displayed side by side on the screen so that you can cut and paste from the document and insert information into the form. At this stage you then, once you're happy with your basic metadata, you hit the submit button and then the tool will submit the document to the British Library's digital infrastructure for ingest. Uh, well, the metadata gets ingested, the document's already in the Legal Deposit Web Archive. Uh, but um, uh, you, will, you will also be able to, um, ex if you've got the necessary licensing permissions, you will be able to send a second copy of the metadata to uh, whichever service you need the document for, such as the Management and Business Studies Portal, Envia, which is our environmental portal, or the social welfare portal. So one copy of the metadata would go into the um, library's digital infrastructure. Another copy would be sent to the relevant service, uh, uh, from which uh, would link back to the to the document. Uh, unfortunately, <coughs> the um, uh, person in charge of the service would then have to write the abstract which, uh, because we don't normally have the app. For a social welfare portal, we have abstracts. <laughs> so we, we would either have to write it, or, or if we had permission, we would use the author abstract. So all the time we are seeking to automate the procedures as far as possible, and to use the metadata and the, op the digital object for more than one thing you know, for both the remote services and the um, legal deposit uh, service through the Explorer, the British Libraries catalogue, so that we can make multiple use uh, in the most efficient way possible. Uh, this is um, a slight, uh, this is a sort of a mock-up of what the basic metadata might look like. You have the title, you have the um, ISBN, you would have up to three authors, uh, corporate author if there is one, publisher, year of publication, and what type it is, whether it's a book, a journal article, or a journal issue. And then you have the URLs, and you have uh, the series in the comment field. This is actually based on the um, metadata for the publisher submission portal, which um, Andy was showing you earlier. And we would also probably be adding the subject, fast subject headings as well. But we would not at this stage be doing name authority control. So, fairly basic record, but it would appear in Explore, our catalogue, 
seven days after ingest and would make the content available at least on site within the library at that point within the libraries because it would also be available in the other legal deposit libraries. And uh, in theory, and we hope in practice, the other legal deposit libraries will also be using this tool to add material to the um, digital infrastructure. And if anyone has any spare time and would like to build the national collection, all offers of using this tool would be gratefully received to um, make sure that your pet subject is well represented. Uh, the uh, uh, catalogue records, our basic ones, will be upgraded later by our digital catalogues to be full mark records. And uh, uh, there will be priority will be given to those which are required for um, the external services such as um, MBS portal or social welfare portal. And the document will remain um, economically stored in the legal deposit web archive. So, we hope that um, uh, this service, this um, phase one as we call it, will be available about the end of March and will be rolled out end of March, beginning of April, as a working tool. And it will be, we will be encouraging curators throughout the British Library, throughout the other legal deposit libraries, and possibly wide, more widely, to actually use it. And we can, together, we can build the celestial city we hope. <laughs> And then in the fact there will be a phase, there is a phase two to this project where we will develop the tool to harvest um, uh, content behind uh, passwords. Uh, some content, even on non-commercial websites, such as Running Link Trust does this, it's free, but it's at you have to register and you have to put in your username and password. Uh, when you want to access it. Uh, Howard Lee for Penal Reform used to do it, but they've mended their ways, but uh, Running Meat Trust still does it. So, and some uh, content is available to members only, et cetera, et cetera. So we will be looking to see if we can um, uh, develop the tool to go behind uh, simple password barriers as far as we are committed by the non-print legal deposit regulations. Uh, obviously, we are not going. Be, we're not going for paid-for content, not at this stage, uh, because um, you know that would be a step too far. Uh, so uh, we have to. Um, we have funding for financial year 14-15, so we are hoping to get everything. Uh, everything up and running by the, as I say, by about the end of March. Uh, and at which point, uh, finding government documents within the British Library catalogue should suddenly become a lot easier going forward. <laughs> uh, but uh, if anybody is interested, we have decided we're going to start cataloguing parliamentary papers at the individual paper level, because we think that will give better access. House of Commons papers and command papers. <laughs> we never had the resources to do it before, but with this, we will give it a go. And for that, we, are ho we hope we can overwrite the basic metadata that we create with a good quality record which been, has been imported from TSO or the National Library of Scotland. And the link, again, would be the ISBN Fortunately, parliamentary papers have ISBNs, so we can do it. Where a document doesn't have an ISBN, and we have, um, we can in certain circumstances import a good quality record from places such as Queen's University Belfast, because they catalogue all the Northern Ireland stuff, which mostly hasn't got an ISBN to its name. But then we're hoping, well, 
we think that um, there would have to be intervention by a digital cataloger who would identify and derive a better quality record. But that would still be quicker than um, upgrading an existing um, basic record. Uh, so, uh, if, if you are influencing people, please encourage publishers to use ISBNs. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the final point is one of the, an additional use case that we're working on, which is what I call the landing page approach. As Helen was saying, there is no way that we're going to be able to catalogue at the document level everything which is on the web. Only the most important documents in each subject will be identified and catalogued. Uh, you know, things like um, the recent you know, report on, reports on various child protection scandals, Winterborne View, things like that. But the curators will know what the important themes and documents are. But in case we, there are other ways in which we can save effort. Uh, one of which is to um, form successive instances of websites into collections within the Legal Deposit Web Archive. Uh, and an obvious uh, benefit is local authorities. There is no way that we're going around cataloguing all of the documents on a local authority website at the individual document level. But what we can do is gather successive instances of Wiltshire County Council into a collection at regulated intervals. Uh, we will have a landing page for each collection within the Legal Deposit Web Archive. Uh, and uh, we can then link from Explore, from our catalogue, to that landing page. And the catalogue record would be fairly simple on the lines of Wiltshire County uh, websites from 2015 onwards. And at least it would guide people. And then it would be up to the researcher to go and look through the archive website to find whatever report was um, they were interested in. The same method can be applied to things like um, annual report series, where all the annual reports of an organisation are published on a single page, and also um, things like um, uh, consultations, where you could have a single record for the consultation which would link to a collection of pages which would have the original consultation, any supporting documents, the, um, the response, the government response to the response, etc., etc. So instead of having uh, six or ten separate catalogue records, just one record for the consultation which would lead you to the whole uh, uh, collection of documents, very easily and conveniently. So we hope that um, this approach will enable us to improve access in a way that is um, uh, scalable and uh, uh, economic, because uh, we hope that we can do it with, by automating the procedures to minimize, as far as possible, the human intervention, so that uh, you know, we will um, be able to improve access at, in a way that is affordable in a very austere uh, economic terms. Uh, as I say, we hope that, um, uh, I would hope that possibly uh, in six months' time, uh, the tool will be out of further, uh, stop sulking and be behaving itself, <laughs> at which point, um, we would be very pleased to show it off to all and any who are interested. Right, uh, I think that's me, my time is up. <laughs> so, uh, any questions?